This is one of the most stunning things a student is likely to see in a physics lesson. It's a bit fiddly to set up, but it's absolutely worth doing, not just because it's beautiful, but because it's incredibly useful for teaching about motion under gravity. Now, we've all seen balls fly through the air, but they move too quickly to see exactly what's going on with the human eye. Projectiles change speed and direction as they travel, and this demonstration lets us see the detail of how projectiles move. You should be able to set this up using equipment you already have in the lab. This demo relies on projecting droplets of water from this glass nozzle and using a stroboscope to illuminate their trajectory as they fall through the air. Just a quick note about safety when using a stroboscope. There is a risk of triggering epileptic episodes at low frequencies, particularly in the range 7 to 15 hertz, so don't use those in front of your student. Another thing to do is to point the stroboscope away from your audience when showing the demo. Now to get drops instead of a steady stream of water, this tube needs to be repeatedly squeezed and released. And to do that, I'm using a vibration generator, which is just pushing the tube against this piece of wood. I'm driving the vibration generator from a signal generator, and I'm using a frequency of about 100 hertz, which I then match to the frequency of the stroboscope. The water comes straight from the tap, but I use a Hoffman clip to control the rate of flow. Now, all this is fairly straightforward to set up, but there is some fiddling involved with precise frequencies and precise arrangements of clamps and so forth to get the drops looking as good as possible. But there is a catch, and it's this. This nozzle here is not a standard piece of equipment, and you may need to make it yourself. To make my nozzle, I'm using a piece of six millimeter glass tubing. Just place that into a Bunsen flame and rotate it so it heats evenly. And you should quickly start to feel it going soft. You see it starting to wobble. And once it goes all wobbly like this, just take it out of the flame and pull it apart steadily. And you can see that I've got a much thinner tube there now. Once it's cooled down, you take a glass scoring device like that and just score around the thin end of the nozzle, or the tube rather. And then that should snap cleanly off like that. And then just put this end back in the flame briefly to round off the edges. And you've got your no nozzle ready to go. To put that into the rubber tubing, it's a good idea to take the end and lubricate it. Just a bit of spit will do. and then twist it into the rubber tubing, being careful not to push too hard. And there you go, there's your nozzle. This can be quite time consuming to set up, but I think it's absolutely worth it. As you can see, this looks like individual drops suspended in air. You can explain to your students that this is an illusion created by the fact that the stroboscope is flashing at the same frequency that the drops are emerging from the nozzle. Now at this stage, it's really easy to get distracted by changing the frequency of the stroboscope or the drops to see what effects you get. But I strongly recommend you don't do this until you've finished using the demo to talk about projectile motion. It's really important to draw your students' attention to exactly what you want them to look at and start by describing the motion. The stroboscope is flashing at 100 hertz, and that means what we see are the positions of drops separated by a hundredth of a second. Horizontally, the gaps between the drops are the same size, and that means it's traveling at a constant speed in that direction. Vertically, the gaps increase in size, so the drops are speeding up as they fall downwards. That is, they're accelerating in the vertical direction. And we can start to understand this behavior by discussing the forces involved. Since the drops are traveling at a constant velocity in the horizontal direction, there can be no acceleration and no force. There might be some air resistance, but we're not really seeing the effect of that. In the vertical direction, there is an acceleration, so there must be a force, and that's gravity. So what we've done is to separate the horizontal motion from the vertical motion of the drops. And that can be a difficult concept for some students to grasp. And I really hope this demo helps to convince them that you can indeed do that. 
There are all sorts of other uses for this apparatus. You could, for example, collect data by measuring the positions of the drops and trying to calculate a value for G. You can change the size of the nozzle and see what happens with different sized drops. And you can change the water pressure to change the horizontal speed. And once you've done all that, you might like to challenge your students to explain what happens when you reduce the frequency of the drops.